What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Today! We can't stop snapping! Awesome episode for you guys today. We are in the wake of enormous meta shifts and lots of changes that we are going to be breaking down. What are the survivors? Who are the true winners and losers of all the shifting that has happened in Snap? What are the best the decks survivors. to play right now? Ooh, looking forward to diving into this with you, Brad. I saw you were testing some spicy new decks and maybe had some hot win streaks. What's the what's the winningest deck for you at the moment? Uh, it's actually just various versions of Sarah Control. We yeah. tried a Toxic Sarah version with your Luke Cage, your Hazmat, and stuff like that. Um, and, of course, Man-Thing. Uh, yep, and yep. even U.S. Agent make an appearance in there as well, uh, surprisingly. Ooh. He's been pretty solid. <laughs> um, and then there's a classic take on it uh, with, like, your Hit Monkey Mysterio uh just enchantress shang chi and like it, it's just it, we did really well with both these lists uh, i love I it so it up right now red guardian hotly anticipated for both of us think he lived up to the hype yes um i i ranked him number two this month teddy i believe you were the same yeah we ranked him number two but two different number ones <laughs> i had zemo right. at the top so you had Zemo at the top. I had the boy, the myth, the the red boy himself, uh, Red Hulk at number one. Yep. yep. Uh, but yeah, this is the classic control list uh, featuring Red Guardian, of course, uh, with your Kitty Pride Angel stuff. Um, like it, this just looks like a, a, a year ago list for the most part. Uh, yeah, which and is what... the Omega Red is the, the Brad. How you know it was a Brad deck? So <laughs> here's the thing: we tried Miss Marvel at first, but sure, Mysterio yeah. made Miss Marvel really awkward very yes. often because yeah, you yeah. want to put your wizard or your maximus or we try like mirage and stuff like that too for like info which actually mirage won us some games but we end, okay. end up leading towards lizard uh cut miss marvel but i wanted that extra power output that the control decks typically lack so we tried omega red omega red's surprisingly really good i will say five out of my 13 losses for sure were because i fucked up on priority <laughs> With Omega Red. <laughs> okay, because Omega Red gave you priority? Correct. Like, I did the ah. math wrong, and I was like, oh, we can do this. We can make this work. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I got to put the Omega Red now because I don't have the window to play him next year. I'm thinking of, like, playing, like, you know, Shang-Chi and stuff, and, like, Shang-Chi Maximus, whatever, but if I didn't have Sarah. Right. And I just was a little off on math. I saw one thing grow up when I thought it would grow up a little bit differently, or they played something differently, or they just pass for no reason. I was just like, uh. And then I throw a priority. And I'm like, well, I know they have a Red Hulk. Yeah, I can no longer shang chi it. But exactly, it's a cool list. Um, no, it so, does seem yeah, very I, cool. Number two, I think that the big shot here for saying that Red Guardian did live up is that Silky Move was like the deck as soon as he released, and now it's nowhere because <laughs> Angela losing out to Red right. Guardian is like almost game over right there by turn three. Um, so that was my favorite thing to snipe with. Honestly, was Angela because yes. the great thing is like because he comes out one, on curve. Exactly. And that, that's what makes him, in my opinion, the second best tech card in the game behind Shang-Chi. Um, like he's, he's jumped all the way for me for that. Uh, yeah. Simply because you actually are happy to play him on curve and just let him be a stat at that point. It'd be a 3-5. If you can snipe an Angela or a Morbius or a... Um, that's the other thing know, like, is discard has largely disappeared for me as well. Like... Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing it. I think drag. literally Red Guardian killed a lot of these decks that had been totally fine in the meta before and now are just too risky. I agree. Uh, it's just like he's just really good. And you look at his like the, the cards you would compare him to. I think first people lean towards Rogue as like a thing of like a, a yeah. direct one to one comparison because they're very similar. Yep. But the thing is, Rogue is a lot narrower, um, hits on goings. She does steal the ongoing so yeah. that is a big portion of it yeah um so you get the benefit of it but i think the fact that she's not as reliable only hits one type of card and not really a card you ever play on three right like what ongoing do you ever steal like with rogue on three maybe like a if i see Rivana? morbius i take it because i know i'm not going to have another target that's the sure. only thing yeah like yeah morbius and like ravona i think yeah but even though even ravona is like an iffy one because it's either you know goblins iron or man, negative iron man might be coming so you might want to hold it <laughs> true yeah yeah and that might be a 
So, in, but then you can just play Red Guardian <laughs> to get the, the Iron Man exactly. later anyway. So. And yeah, Rogue is a 3-2 if she's missing, and Guardian is a 3-5 if he's missing. And that's so much better. So much better. Yeah, m- missing in the sense of, like, you still have a body in front of him to hit, right? If yeah, it's yeah. an empty lane, he's a 3-3. That's his very well, bottom floor. I feel like but. you're... How, how often... I w- I'll be so curious. How many games have a completely empty lane from any player? I've yet to do it, and I've played Red Guardian on 3 into an empty lane when I don't have priority several times and just sniped. Cause I'm like, this is where they played this card, right? Yeah. yeah, For sure. sure it's where is. they play this card. I mean, the locations uh, can queue you into what you need. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think very good card. One of the best cards we've gotten in a long time. One of the most meta impacting cards we've gotten in a long time, but in a sneaky way, like no one's yeah. going to sit there and be like, Oh, where were you when red guardian dropped and changed the meta? No one's going to say that, but in reality, right just his existence is altering the play rates of cards like Angela and cards like in this card, like you, like you said. Yeah, exactly. Because red Hulk is going to be the flashiest card from this season dropping in with just so much power. And because you get this ticking, like the mental affliction of knowing that he's scaling makes him very present in people's minds. But guardian, I think is having an enormous meta impact as well. So what I've been tooling around with is a lot of junk decks. I've got a very toxic junk list that has shot me up to the top 200 just over like the last 48 hours, which has been amazing. And now nice. that I'm there, I'm hitting all of these like absolute top players, which that's that's a beat down. Uh, two of the top 20 players have hit me with the same, what I believe is the same deck. I haven't seen every card yet. So let's play a little game of finish that deck. Brad, you are my autofill is that what they call it in game right (laughs) yeah i've got ideas i have like a working prototype and i think honestly a lot of these slots that i'm missing are pretty flexible the Mm -hmm. core of what the deck does is in front of us you have the best two card combo in the game sentry and nihilist that's your point scoring shell and then you're using mockingbird mysterio debris to hold in a very cheap mockingbird with this like junk and then you have valkyrie as a contingency for the void who also contributes to mockingbird mobius because it's you have space and he's generally good how are we rounding it out so there's a list that's gone around i believe it was jeff hoogland that came up with it originally uh it was also alex uh the one that does the podcast with cozy yeah um from the snapchat they also had a similar list i've seen people credit both of them so i don't know where it originates from but there is a list that's gone around with Pixie. And the reason I'm leaning towards it's maybe Pixie is one of these last two cards. And then I think maybe two other one drops. Like I would think Pixie, Spider-Ham, Iceman, or like Nico, something like that. Because this Mobius. Mm. This Mobius feels so out of place here. The only thing I could think yeah. of the Mobius being in here for is to protect your Mockingbird to always be lower. But how often are you seeing... Mobius on the other side of the well, board. Wait, so what I do see a s- decent amount of Renslayer and negative decks. It could be kind of responsive um, to something in the meta. And that could also be like one of these players' tech choices. Is it like, oh, I got extra spot. I'm going to run Mobius. Mm-hmm. I right. mean, it, I honestly, looking at like those three empty spaces, Red Guardian is definitely making a play for belonging in one of them now if you do the pixie three, i understand three you three want costs to bring the one is, drops. Uh, three three cost makes me a little sad but yeah i can see red guardian you also have hazmat luke cage yep and then if we want to just shift everything into basically the deck that i'm already running you go man thing there's a there's also maybe patriots in this <laughs> patriot could be you are putting down demon if you yeah, the two demon, mysterio, mysterio illusions, two rocks. The rocks. Um, and then and you like actually have the that, void. If you pick the void yeah, up with Valkyrie, you, it's a Valkyrie valid the void. target. Yeah, <laughs> that they won't expect that you yeah. Valkyrie the void. And it's like, ha he's a, uh, a a five power now. What if that's a fifteen power swing there, Teddy? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I okay. I'm kind of into the Patriot idea a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, I don't think it's Patriot, but it no, seems really it could funny. Be. I mean, why not? Uh, I don't know what else you would run. Like maybe Squirrel Girl's in there, but I'm I'm oh, surprised no, you no, haven't no. seen Squirrel Girl. She she would be in. You'd see her. 
Yeah, I think that's like almost too much board spam then. Also, Cannonball always makes sense when you've got debris. Yeah, sure. Um, Red Goblin, or sorry, Green Goblin. This is the... uh, the, This is your take? The the one that I was thinking... uh, Not my take. This is the one that's actually going around. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have seen this one. Some people are cutting Polaris for Red Guardian now. Uh, I'm one of those people that have tried it. I'm actually 6-0 with this list uh, with the Red Guardian replacement Mm. in Conquest. I've gotten two straight golds. Uh, but for those in the audience and, uh, for those that watch this later on YouTube or Spotify, it's not because of this girl here. I would say maybe one out of pixie every audio listeners. Yes. I'm sorry. Audio listeners pointing at pixie. Thank you, Teddy. It's not because of pixie. I would say one out of every conquest, um, battle, like each, like between for rounds, like one round, every total battle, she has an impact where I could say I won it largely in part of what pixie did um i was telling you before we started there was a game where i got someone down to the last two cubes we were in double yeah. a limb on stream today and uh they were playing like a uh a zoo deck they had no shang chi in the list oh, no. and on turn three after playing pixie i played nico uh who had the copy spell yep. on yep into a one cost red hulk <laughs> <laughs> and I just the second Lights they out. flipped and that red hole copy added to my hand, I just see opponent retreated, yep. gone, game gone. over. It was so funny. Oh, that's so um, good. But you don't win because of Pixie more often than not. It's just, again, you already said it, Teddy. The deck that you're looking at here ha- already has one of the best one two punches in the entire game. I mean, if you wanted to, this is the best trifecta of cards, I think, in Snap. And I don't think it's really that hard to. Uh, you know, argue against or um, arguing for it. I guess. Yeah. No. Hood, Annihilus, and Sentry. Yeah. Might be the best package we've ever had in the game. It scores very reliably. The Hood and Sentry have like countermeasures, even if you don't find Annihilus. And the huge kicker is that you're done by turn five. It's all affordable, and then your right. turn six is open to whatever you want. If you want a big like six a cost giant finisher, Red Hulk. Or if you want to be able to squeeze in something "quote unquote" more affordable, like a uh, you know Legion Demon, one of my favorite enders, mm-hmm. really good. Which I think I yep. might try Legion in this deck too. My you're, first you're pick gonna, here is I'm going rock Green Goblin Legion four, Shang-Chi. Four or five costs. Yeah, Mockingbird is not a five cost. Okay, well, uh, question for you though. Yep. When White Widow inevitably comes out yes. uh, next week, are you dropping debris for her? I would probably drop something else. I would love to have debris and White Widow. Mm. See, I hate debris. What? <laughs> I hate debris. Why? I hate her as a card. I, I... hate I, my board space is precious. I... Let me only deal with like mess with your. Okay, board so space. someone in my Discord was like, "Run Carnage," because then you can kill a Mysterio yeah, Illusion I, I, and I've... a Rock and the Void. Sure. I guess uh, you can you can do that. But like but in then, this deck, they I was playing yeah, the yeah. same same game with my with my Discord. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean you could. Uh, I kind of stopped. Like I I remember like three seasons ago. Um, well, I wonder if it was was it before Anios came out or the season Anios did come out. I was running a um, a Carnage in my junk list. Yeah, just as a backup plan to like kind of weave into the final turn, right? Because uh, sometimes on turn six, like if you've already a Nihilus on five, or whatever, you draw Sentry late and you go, okay, I'm just going to Sentry, you know, Carnage, right? Um, it was always fine. I just, it always felt like, God, this should be something else in the deck, you know? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it works and it has its functionality. But I just wish it was something else almost every time, even when it was doing its job. I guess, it, yeah. It felt like it wasn't the best thing to be doing. It's, I mean, no, the best thing to be doing is Annihilus. It is a very funny pull for Baron Zemo off the opponent, which would be the destroy Baron Zemo when you hit nil is crazy. Um, right. Right now, yeah, I want to try this deck, but I'm at the same time very enamored with my more hazmat toxic focused one, which can get the negative power on the rocks and then Annihilus throws the rocks. So it's basically just playing old Annihilus <laughs> if you hit that combo, which is oh so much fun. 
Yeah, and Lloyd says Carnage is also a very funny Baron Zima pull from my exactly, opponent. Exactly, exactly. Like, just like you said. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, everybody, uh, we are having our first ever public live episode to where free members of Patreon can join in. Um, so yeah, those in the audience, welcome. Hello. Hello. And hopefully more people join as we go along. But yeah, I, I mean, this, you could do so many, it's, it's funny, this, this game is actually more interesting than I thought it'd be off rip based on the fact that it's just an Annihilus shell. Yeah. Um, you can actually do a lot of interesting things with these last three spots. Well, yeah, we went from everything from like toxic hazmat to patriot to, you know, you lean the, in the more pixie. into junk, lean into pixie energy cheat yourself. Like it's so open. It's fun. Uh, I, I just I love this 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 combo of cards. I hope they never touch Sentry Hood or Annihilus. I hope these live throughout the, the they they withstand the test of time for the rest of Marvel Snap. Sentry Annihilus has always felt just a little unfair, but at the same time, it's been around long enough that now I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Right. I don't know. The more also the more like options they bring in, there's always ways to play around it. It when you're in the mental game, like in the trenches, you're like, ah, it's it is a skill matchup. It's good. Right. It's good. Well, here's the thing. So I think I was, we talked about before, I, I, especially with the last patch about the, the changes to a, a lion and stuff like that, where I was like, it feels like they're trying to like say, if a card has any semblance of a feels bad, they want to do their best to eliminate said feels bad. Uh, I've come around on a life, by the way, I think he's still very good. Um, okay. Yeah probably underplayed at this point because people love dropping their toys the second that they get a quote unquote nerf. Um, right. Elias still wins you most games. He would have won you anyway. And now wins you some games yeah, you shouldn't have won before. Um, yeah, it's interesting, especially it's like so meta dependent on if people are looking for ability activations or if they're playing something like this and it's going to be red Hulk and it's like, ah, my red Hulk to your Elias yeah. or Annihilus. Like, well, hold on. You could run a alongside red Hulk there's nothing better than yep. the entire game. Your Red Hulk's growing. Your opponent's like, oh, he's got the Red Hulk, the Red Hulk. And all of a sudden, right. you flip a Lyoth. Oh, come on. That's great. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah. Or my, you got to play Red Hulk early because you're doing the Hope Red Hulk trick. And then you know they have Shang. And you're like, no, my, mm. uh, my yeah. Lyoth's got my back. Correct. Uh, so my, my reason for bringing that up is just simply because the reason I don't think Annihilus fits that bill of something that they'll change yeah. Is because looking at Eliath in the original state or Professor X when he was a 5 1, I'm sorry, 5 3, I apologize, um, and like all these other cards of that kind of vein, it, Annihilus doesn't fit that because you need specific counters for those other cards. Where Annihilus, you can counter just by playing the game. Like, yep. you, you change just, how you play a little bit, but it's your right. calculation on if you think it's worth it. Yeah, you don't need a specific card to stop it. Now, there's benefits of having specific move cards like Jeff or Vision to clog the lane when they play Annihilus, have the Void go away, and they can move and put more stuff there later. But you can just commit and be like, yeah, slam this down, fill that lane. You are not. You have to beat me with actual stats instead of uh, trying to beat me with a Void. So yeah, exactly. that's why I think that Annihilus is, is mostly fine. Uh, but you know what's not mostly fine, Teddy? <laughs> It's not mostly fine, Brad. Uh, according to the community, it's the price of these things. Oh, is the price of the emotes? The little capitalists going off <laughs> over here? What do one of these run me? Uh, about $30. Uh, ah! in, you know, 30 United States Could you, doll hairs. At least. Can you? They were pretty generous to let us, once you own it, keep spamming it for free can you imagine right. if there was an uh, extra uh, price for spamming it yeah every price. time you hit the button it's if it like, was oh. counter strike it would be price per button tap <laughs> <laughs> yeah so these things cost 2200 gold yeah that is around 30 bucks us oh, uh, more in other like uh, canadian dollars it's like 40 or 50 bucks almost uh, australian it's a little bit more as well so all that good stuff now it's a little ridiculous to me that these are as expensive as they are when at the end of the day they are pngs on a screen that yep. do not have an impact on the game itself well so yeah uh, it's interesting because i think i've always said that i love how legends of runeterra is monetized very much around cosmetics 
And so this is like one of Snap's avenues towards it. Now, one of the biggest things for Legends of Runeterra is you can customize your board and you get to show that off. And it's like obviously like a larger, more yeah. customized thing for you. And this is just that little emote. And because your opponent can mute it, <laughs> that's the thing. Correct. Is you've paid this much. You don't know if your opponent is ever going to see this because they can just be tapping mute as soon as they, they see you. That's what is really crazy about the, these. Also, they don't have voice lines. That too. That so, was, okay. That's what hurts. I I would, if if I have anyone that's watching <clears throat> yep. or listening okay. who does not, be, does not agree with me, right? And they say, hey, it's cosmetics. You don't have to buy them. You know, no, they're exactly. not the card pieces. It's fine. Sure. Okay. Let me ask you this. Um, Matt, you ever played Fortnite, Teddy, or anything equivalent? What do you call equivalent? <laughs> I guess PUBG or I like played, Call of Duty. I played, what was the wrestling one? Rumbleverse? They played oh, okay. a lot of Rumbleverse. Okay. Were there emotes and stuff in Rumbleverse? Yes. Like like you could like, like in Fortnite, you have like the dance emotes, right? That's the big thing. Yep. Okay. Imagine if Epic Games or whoever the studio for Rumbleverse was yep because they shut decided, it down fast yeah uh decided hey rather than allow you to get a skin for like you know a skin usually runs you 20 bucks 15 20 bucks for a skin on average right and that's right. about what it is for you know that the 1200 for a, a, a super rare variant that's about Card 15 variant, bucks yeah. right cool going on 20 but here you go. Here's a dance. Here's the gritty you can do in Fortnite now. 30 bucks, please. You get no skin with it. You get no other things. You just get the dance for $30. And I want you to look me in the eye and tell me you would be okay with that as of someone who played any other game. Like a, a, a dance, a, 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 uh, just a little move or like, like, uh, like, you know how like in Counter-Strike you can inspect your gun? Imagine they sold you an inspect for your gun, but like stylized or you could do like a flip or something sure. and it's $30. <laughs> like, no, the, the price tag is crazy, saying. but I mean, obviously the conversation is like, like the kicker for me is still like that. It can just be muted from the opponent and the opponent will yeah. never see it. Uh, that's the huge kicker for me on not liking it in favor of it is that snap is decently generous in the trickle of gold that they just give you. Sure. Um, it's still $30 worth though. Yeah, but the, also they are straight up removing any terms of like actual practical account progression from gold. Like gold, it feels like they're transitioning into just your cosmetic currency. And so I if you so, get yeah. this this trickle, you're like, oh, so like I get to pick four free. I can either choose if I want variants or emotes a year based on however much okay. you get or you can probably get more than that but yeah the reason but the reason i bring that comparison between like the skins of being 15 yeah. bucks and then like the dance being 30 that's what's happening in the game though the highest priced variant for gold not counting like paid bundles where you have the infinite bundle it's like 100 bucks or whatever yeah, yeah. that's not what i'm saying right. the highest price of currency for gold and variants is 1200 right so you're saying an emote, which does not affect your game pieces, the game pieces of which you can split, get cool crackle effects and stuff like that. And you you can't mute those, Teddy. I can't mute yeah. your Kirby crackle split that you adore in exactly. your deck and say, oh, I don't want to see that. I'll always see that. So there's a sense of pride to that emote, right? Or I'm sorry, uh, the variant. You're saying that the emote costs nearly double that? that variant that doesn't make sense to me i don't care that it costs anything but it, it should be at the very least less i would say make it 700 because 700 is still ten dollars teddy i know is still it's $10. still ten dollars but at the same time brad there is an element of like they get to create this whole um economy themselves right it's a fictional economy with their own premium currency Mm -hmm. And so having them be expensive means that people, when you pick something, you know that not many other people are going to have it. And then if you show it off in game, you know that not many people are going to see it unless they play you. So there's like an element to that. 
that I yeah. do find appealing. Uh, Lloyd Gets Annoyed brings up that you do get free emotes by progressing through the albums, but a number of these that are now in the cosmetic shop are exclusive currently to the cosmetic shop. We don't know if they'll be introduced in other ways. Um, and I guess that is the optimist way of looking at it is that this is just the early wave kind of like Nexus events, and then they're going to take feedback and bring it, weave it into the economy and other more accessible ways. Do you think ways. they'll ever lower the price? No, but I think that there will be more free ways of getting it. I was going to say... Like, I guarantee you something is going to get added to the Conquest shop consistently to be able uh, to buy. Um, and then yeah. maybe find other ways to work this into, like, caches and stuff like that. It'd be cool if you could pull one of these into cache. That'd be great. Also, what would... So, you t- we're talking about how you could, like, split stuff. What if you could split emotes? That'd be sick. Like an inked emote would be cool. Yeah. I don't know how you do a gold emote. I guess you'd have to make the whole emote itself gold. But basically, yeah, if you could then like collect a, a small amount of currency per games you ran with a deck that had it slotted in, and then you got to split it <laughs> into some kind of custom flare on it. Yeah, and I mean, the the thing with the albums, though, it's like you can at least progress for free technically through the albums just by you know playing the game eventually you'll you'll get all those variants at some point whether you buy them or pull them Um, and you could say the same thing of like eventually you'll get enough gold to buy an emote sure uh, through your per season 500 gold or whatever stuff like that another thing for you what if they make it so when you craft your deck, you select one emote that will always show the first moment they load into game, and that cannot be muted. It'll just flash once, and then you're in game, right? And then there's one that happens at the end of the game once the match has been decided. That's so guaranteed. Like a, a both... hello goodbye emote, essentially. Yeah, exactly. You, and so it's just because right select. now there's a pocket, actually a majority of the community that just thinks any emote is annoying. But if both sides just choose one that will only appear at the beginning and the end. I think then it kind of normalizes it and you get to show off these emotes and you can choose to mute or spam in between however you want. Yeah, I think that's fine. Also, Actually, I actually would love that. <laughs> I uh Now, okay. This this we're getting we're veering off a little bit, but I have to yeah. ask you this cuz I've thought about this a few times. Okay. What do you think about emote reworks? Reworking emotes? So so what one thing I'm thinking of is so you have this Agatha one coming out in June, right? Mm-hmm. And this Agatha one here, let me zoom in a little bit. Oh no. Uh, Are gonna get demonetized? Looks... <laughs> <laughs> Careful. Uh looks like a ruder version of Miss Marvel, right? It's a more aggressive wink. It looks way more sarcastic. The thumbs pointing at you now. Like okay. I feel like this is more toxic than Miss Marvel, right? Okay. So what do we need Miss Marvel for to fit that void, especially when they wanted Miss Marvel originally to be like a good a good game thumbs up, right? Like it, they meant it like they wanted this to be a cool thing. So like what if they just took away the wink? What if they just reworked her and they got rid of the wink, both eyes are open. I really think the wink being yeah, gone think- would actually make her seem way more wholesome. I think that instead of giving the thumbs up, which can be taken as sarcastic or as True. your PG middle finger, she needs high to be like, yeah, uh, that's like a stop though. She needs to be like giving you something. Like what if she's offering a flower or like some little trinket, mm-hmm. you know? Right. Because the thumbs up does feel like a middle finger. Yeah. As in, in its current form. I do think a wink goes a long way with that, though, with, to add the sarcasm. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know why they thought the wink was a good idea, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I think the artist just like playing with her lashes. Yeah, probably. Like, if you just... I don't know. I mean, I guess if you... You could do like something like the fist bump, where like she's doing a high five, and like there's another hand she's high-fiving. You know, that's the next thing. That's the next level is you move the emotes to be close enough to each other that you have interaction emotes. Yeah, I like that. 
<laughs> but yeah, I just like, like imagine you rework some of these. Like, okay, like th- this this is a great one for the hello, the Mister Fantastic hello. Um, like, there's oh, wow. a lot of these that are gonna, I think, be wholesome. Um, Devil Dino. Oh, this this Arisham approves is gonna be sick. When an opponent does a cool play and you go, oh yeah, like, that's great. I got you. <laughs> but like, then the Captain Marvel shrug is like, oh, that's that's gonna be toxic. Um, my favorite right now is just this, um, is this magic with Dr. Strange that works for almost anything. <laughs> like whatever happens, I just like do this. <laughs> Which one? The, sorry, uh, Dr. Strange with the butterfly. Oh yeah. 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 Is this a, <laughs> do you, you have this one? Yeah. Nice. That's, that's the midnight the sounds album. one, right? Yep. Midnight okay. sounds album. I remember so it's sad. <laughs> yeah. I don't have that one. Um, it's just like it could be anything and it's just a an uncommon one so i just i'm like yep the opponent did an emote i do this i i love this ice man that that's what i use the most uh mm-hmm. mostly because it took me like two weeks to get the electrode to appear in my shop that was what i was waiting on um yeah but i love it when like my opponent snaps and i just hit that just like oh god <laughs> oh you're snapping <laughs> like uh there, there's a lot of these that are great i mean i'm excited for a lot of more to come out I hope they get a bit more easier to acquire. Um, almost, I almost have the Sandman, uh, salty one. Uh, I've, I'm two away from that album being complete, and I'm also three away from the leader. Too smart. Leader too smart. Yeah, those are the ones I really want right now. Yeah, like the, uh, and also the thinking lad. I actually really want. Because sometimes I genuinely do take the entirety of my clock to think of a play, especially in the late game, like turn five, turn six. So yeah. like if someone hits me with that miss minutes, the waiting around one, I'll just reply with the thinking lad. It's like, hold on. I'm right. here. I'm thinking. I'm not rope snapping. I'm right. thinking. That doesn't even work anymore. Yeah. For the most part. So yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, right. You're giving the opponent anxiety with how long you're thinking. Exactly, well, Pepper. Sorry, not my problem. Okay, moving All on. All right. So from uh, once we get enough emotes in, maybe we can do a tier list of uh, emotes or the the emote meta. What about the the real meta now? Yeah, the winners so... and the losers of the patch. I gotta say, junk is feeling like a winner, from my experience. Because Lady Deathstrike feels like a genuine solid Plan B to Annihilus now. Um, where you prefer, I know, Valkyrie for the most part in that slot. Um, I like the more power presented by Lady Deathstrike. A wise man once said, points are points are points. Yeah. And it also doesn't matter if you win by a mile or an inch. A win's a win. But you know what, Teddy? I like winning by a mile more often than okay. an inch. Yeah, you want to blow them away? So I would like more power, please. I would like yep. any opportunity to give more of a swing uh in my favor and i think the ceiling of lady death strike is higher than valkyries because the ceiling for valkyrie is just you know i get 12 you get three right lady death strike could just be you get zero i get a lot more <laughs> like, right. like i don't know like just the power output and this the swing in that sense um yeah i, I just I, this this is like the far and the way the the biggest winner for me from this patch was uh, lady death strike now we've had time no to, I, i'm shocked because started. initially seeing the changes i was like oh, lady death strike they're just gonna wait for like another final form or a new card to get released where she's actually playable but she's the card that i've seen the most mm-hmm. i saw a little bit of strong guy and a little bit of sandman right around the patch releasing red guardian scared away um discard and then the sandman ramp has also vanished now but it's lady death strike that is stuck around um, and I do love it. I'm seeing her more often in decks that are not destroy decks, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Uh, I just wish, uh, I don't know, a strong guy I feel like should show up in more stuff. Uh, well, well, let's backtrack. Okay. Biggest loser, right? Zabu. Zabu, by far. Yeah. But I'm not shedding many tears over uh over his demise i had it brought up on my stream is this the biggest nerf to a card all time so that's putting it up with Ooh. basically the galactus rework <laughs> okay but the original galactus was actually okay the six seven um no it was a mid galactus from like the six two to the six five 
No, it went to six seven before six five. Remember, the original oh. change to Galactus okay, yes. was from six two to six seven, and then yes. Eliath came out, and they're like, Galactus is suddenly doing okay because of Eliath. So we're gonna nerf Galactus's power to five, which they should honestly put Galactus back to seven, in my opinion. But at this point, if you wanted to be playable, yes. So yeah, we got original leader Galactus and Zabu. What's your biggest? murder it's of a card. it's original leader i don't think there's any there's any competition original leader uh, is arrow, so arrow, bad arrow, arrow is From still all okay. cards to one card yeah arrow is still fine like arrow arrow is okay i played her a little she's fine okay okay i would rather have well, I arrow in her current she state didn't come up in any of our conversations about what to plug into these good card decks <laughs> sure, uh, because she needs, I don't know, she needs a little something. Um, but I would rather have Arrow in her current state than the leader when he was at 6-7, everything to the right of him. But that, that meant the immediate weird. right lane. It was just weird. It, yeah, no one understood what it meant. I'm like, does that mean I, I can play him in the left lane? I get the middle and right lane? That's not too bad. No, 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 you I have to, you only get the middle lane. I, I think it's original leader. I, I think right. Zabu at least has the ability to still ramp into your combo-ish pieces like Wong um, or whatever. Um, That's or also you know, with the, people, Wong, the content creators went into this saying, oh, we got on with the L synergies now, baby. I can craft a deck that will make, because there's no minimum one, free four cost cards on the yeah. final turn. And they yeah. were able to do it. Obviously, it's not going to be competitive, but the on reveal synergy means that there is some niche uses. So do you think we, we, uh, we, we talked about this before about Zabu going up to five. Do you think a five, four, five, five on reveal minus two is uh, something we could consider? Oh yeah. It's just like an alternate Sarah, basically instead of everything, yeah. it's only four costs, but it's a much more, it's a much more dramatic discount. Correct. Yes. Yeah. I, I like that. I, I mean, what if, I mean, listen, make him a four cost, Lower power. Four cost that discounts four costs. There's just something about that. By two. On review or ongoing? Ongoing. Uh, I'm a little wary of it. I'm a little little wary of it. A little wary. You know you'd love it. Nope. I'm a little scared of it, That that means that you could go back to your... I mean, it's dangerous because then you just play Zabu into Sarah, right? Right. And then you have one cost, four costs. And then one cost everything, pretty much, because the other stuff in your deck is two costs anyway. Right. Controls. That might be too much. I wonder if there's an elegant way to write a clause. I, on... I would just, I would, the reason I think five and on reveal um, is a good but way to put two. it. Because, yeah, because then it's a direct competitor to Sarah. Because now yeah. you can't go wave into Zabu, into Sarah. I guess you can go wave into Sarah, into Zabu at that point. But you're you're putting a lot of work in just to just to get this. Yeah, yeah. this no, just wave Sarah reaction. into anything has never materialized as like a good deck, right? So, I I think I I also would love to see more competition to to Sarah. I don't want her to get nerfed. I don't want her to change. I think she's great and she's in a very good spot and has been for quite a while ever since she went down to, from a five five to a five four. However, especially with Mobius here, right? Now that we right. have Mobius, you know, let them do some wild stuff with the discount decks. Give us some very different looks. And that minus two on a four cost was a very different look. Yeah. So I, I like that idea. Um, but if we look at the overarching meta entirely, the absence of Zabu has left a bit of a uh, an open season, so to speak, right? So since the last patch, which was on the 10th, our top play decks are... This toxic Sarah Man, Surfer man. list. We have Silky. When Smooth. was the last time we had such a wide open meta? It was like back before Thanos took over. I feel like. Yeah, I this think is... you're. I think you're, also no Thanos in these. So like, let's let's run through them real quick. So we have yeah. one, two, three, four uh, different decks in the top four. So that's six a decks. Destroy, discard, Silky move, and a Sarah deck. Yep, Hella negative uh the fact that negative decks. is good i'm so happy to be proven wrong on that i didn't think he was gonna make it but he made it my champ 
Uh, Shuri they going to come back because Red Hulk Shuri is just doing, good. Shuri doing fine. Um, because you have the ability to go a Hope Summers into Shuri into Red Hulk into Taskmaster now, which is pretty sick. Yeah, why not? Um, then you have Loki still doing pretty good. Um, some Junk. Red Guardian should be in there. You got Junk, Junk. You got Hella Baby. Tribunal. You got Phoenix Force. You got you know just. And then we get some repeating offenders. Galactus is in here. Electro Should Ramp not is be. Still I mean, we've, we've dropped off here, but I mean, just that clump that we saw at the top. We're still at 4,000 games played. That's that's still a decent... You're still yeah. likely to see these. What I find a little surprising is the High Evolutionary missing as well. Like, the big bads are gone. Yeah. Well, how is High Evo doing? Let's take a look. I think High he's doing Evo. okay, is the thing. Like, I think it's a fine deck Ooh. if you want to pursue it. People got caught up in trying to run us agent in it and i don't know if that's really the way to go like just the hulk drop i feel like it's still fine yeah and then this other one is doing moon girl stuff the moon girl one is yeah the moon girl she hulk i've seen this it's it's it works yeah but if they don't play mobius (laughs) it works if they don't play mobius then there's this version that's so sad look at that zero average cube game Minus one. Losing average Q. But these are also really small sample sizes. I'm like so people are just confused. not playing it. Okay, hold on, hold on. People are just not Suddenly playing it. we're up to 0. 0.35, 0. 0.30. I know it's we're only at 270, 240, 260. Yeah, these are just unique flavors that like specific good players are choosing to use or not. Yeah, I don't know. This feels it feels Is the filter weird. including infinite or is it only pre infinite? It's uh including post infinite. So let's do it is just a one hundred plus. Just post infinite, the best one is plus. Oh, it's gonna be all smaller 13. sample sizes. Oh. Uh, Interesting. So so far the highest one is this 0.28. Oh, what is That's this? Only 150 games. So oh, I mean, what is this? What is beautiful, this? Beautiful thing. Negative 1.72 average cubes per game. It's running Jeff, Negasonic, uh, Cyclops, Baron Zemo, Shuri, High Evo, Iron Man, Sarah, Galactus, Thanos, Red Hulk, Death. You're just the running the High Evo just for the Cyclops? The rules of playing this deck is that you have to snap as soon as you start it. <laughs> Clearly. Think. Playing every big bad. Uh, if we did not including Infinite and just did the, <laughs> the Journey, because someone asked. Okay. Uh it's more mostly the same kind of just middle of the road. Yeah. Meh. Um, makes me a little sad, but otherwise, I mean, you could, we're not saying high is bad. I, I think you are correct. And people got caught up in the release of us agent, wanted to make that work with the affliction and stuff like that. And then kind of just honed in on like really heavily on these affliction versions of high with a bomb yeah. and stuff like that even with or without us agent and kind of left to the side, the she Hulk regular Hulk versions, which I still think are the better versions. Right. It's just, they don't have, they can't leverage leech anymore, I guess. I mean, you could, well, you can, because it's still, the idea is it protects limbo and anything that's going to attack limbo is going to get blocked by leech. So, you know what else protects limbo? What protects limbo, Brad? Kang on six. Oh, Kang on six protects limbo. At least protects your cubes when you know you got to retreat or not. If they're changing limbo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it could draw you a card. Well, yeah. Once could. in uh once in twelve games it draws you a card, I think. Yes. Correct. That, that is I think that math checks out. <laughs> All right, Ra- run the fourth big bad. That's why it's not in the meta. They haven't <laughs> found the fourth big bad for the oh, we, deck. Oh, you're telling me the key to winning is just run all the big bads? Yeah. High Evo, Arisham Thanos, is going to be in there Galactus, next. Uh, Kang. Yep. And then eventually Arisham. Yep. A, a, a casual 30, uh, 30 card deck. Why not? I play Magic <laughs> and Snap. <laughs> uh, I think got all day, baby. <laughs> shuffling, shuffling. This is optimum. <laughs> it's like the, the Yu Gi Oh players that brought the, the, the briefcase of like the thousand, to waste people's the thousand time. card deck. Yeah. And the, the majority of effects require them to shuffle their deck. <laughs> that was That's the kicker. Yeah. You see the pictures? Yeah. And then you realize they built the deck with as many effects as possible that would require them to shuffle. Yeah. They basically intended to just draw every round. Yeah. 
That sounds beautiful. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the meta is in a really good spot. Run, if you run Evo Arishem, will our Evo update any Arishem pulled cards? No. I, I assume not. Because they these both happen simultaneously. I know they're yeah, gonna but, the the little effect that they'll inevitably have for Arishem and Haivo and stuff like that when the beginning of the game will come one after the other, but they happen yeah. simultaneously. So anything that you pull with Arishem is happening at the exact same time that Haivo is making those changes. So technically they're not seen. And it's Haiva specifically says uh cards starting in your deck? I believe so. Or is it just at the start of the game? So the game unlock the potential of your cards with no abilities. So the the keyword your cards with no abilities makes you think yeah, they you, have to be in the you deck. You kind of assume, yeah, cards that started in your deck rather than cards added to deck by RSM. And also, I, I, I'm not going to knock Second Dinner for not being specific with that wording because I don't think they ever really anticipated... RSM you know, releasing. <laughs> I guess not... Well, they, they did. They were definitely working on RSM, so. but like this being an issue. No, yeah. Uh, my one bone. It would be very pick, funny if it worked, though. It would be. It'd be actually great. Just, just randomly draw another Hulk. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I, my one bone to pick is this Godforsaken oh, it's list. A little toxic, toxic Sarah. Yeah. So with I the hate Wongo this list. Combo. I hate this list mostly because through all of my experience in card games. The years and years I've spent playing various games from Yu-Gi-Oh! to Magic to Snap to Arcana to even One Piece, Dragon Ball Super. I played everything under the sun. Pokemon. Yep. There's no way this is the correct list. There is no shot that in the year of 2024, our Lord, that a uber greedy hazmat surfer Wong Absman Odin list is the premier correct list to run if you're trying to run surfer. I don't Why? know. I happen to see a 0.3 cube gain on average, which is pretty spicy oh, for right, a deck getting right, played right. that much. Cool, cool. Let's 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 put Ooh, it post infinite. Ouch. Yeah, you post like that? infinite it is not there. <laughs> oh, it's it's like suddenly when you play decent players, it's an ass deck. Well, it's also like that is the perfect deck to abuse bot mentality because Correct. you're low tempo and so they snap into you and then you hit them with all the effects. Yeah, yeah, it exactly. It is like the game plan you want to use against bots just naturally. I will say that I think playing greedier decks is correct to climb on ranked. I, I like agree with you. That style of deck is what often finds success in best of ones. I agree with you. I, I'm just saying like, I still see it. It's still the most played deck post-Infinite, right? According yeah. to numbers. Um, so... My point, and I see it a lot in Conquest too. I'm sorry. I beat the hell out of this deck in Conquest. It's not hard to beat. It's really not. And I'm just like, do they have the combo? Yep. Okay. Do I have Luke Cage in my deck? Maybe. Right. Or yeah. do I have Red Guardian to just turn off Wong? Or Lady Deathstrike to eat the Wong? The Lady like, Deathstrike is brutal against this old oh, man. Or you Lady Deathstrike. <laughs> they set up Wong set Mystique. Up? They're like, I'm about to turn on. And then Lady yeah. Deathstrike claws yeah, to the face. Yeah, it's like, I don't care. about. I guess just, uh, how do we go from the nice thing of play Sarah, play your brood and your, your Silver Surfer and play Shaw. That's great. But you can also include Killmonger, Nova to have a counterplay and something that actually benefits from that counterplay to hit one drops. You can put Red Guardian in the list now, you know? You, you can. You don't need to run Mystique. You don't need to run Magic. You don't got to do this. Stop it. Just just play a better Surfer list, a more consistent it, Surfer list, an honest Surfer list. The Mystique is the one that makes it really, really greedy. Yeah. Right. And, uh, that oh, and the Odin. Of what I... And the Odin. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oh, well, yeah. But when you're playing Wong with these kind of on reveals of Ironheart Surfer Hazmat, I understand where the Odin is coming from, and it will win you games. Um, I do think that this deck is going to fall off. Part of its success was that initially nobody was running a Wong-Odin combo, and so... I don't know, people just didn't expect the Odin. And then it's like, yeah, that just will win if you didn't have an answer. Also, Cosmo is not around right now. Right, so. I was about to just pull up his, his play rate. Yep. 5.3% uh, popularity. Uh, that's only post-infinite, though. Let's, let's, let's expand our horizons a bit, because I think maybe post-infinite players 
might look at that and be like, you know, I should play more Cosmo. Okay, Teddy, do you have the over or under on Cosmo's play rate, including pre-infinite? Including pre-infinite? Yeah, so that, we just to, we just saw 5.5 uh, 5 or whatever, 5.3 in post of it only, including 80 to 100 now, 80 to 99. You have the over or under? Under. I agree. I think it's going to be like 2.5. I think it's going to like drop 2. off. 2.5? I was going to go 3 something. Oh, we're wrong. It went, it's, it's the over. It's 7.5, including that. Interesting. Do you see Cosmo ever? <laughs> no. I mean, I did. There was a like... blip where Loki was running Cosmo, but now that's gone. Yeah, here there is the Loki list of Cosmo. I, I do yeah. see sometimes Cosmo in Tribunal on occasion. I don't even see that. <laughs> I've seen it a couple of times. Okay. Um, I've run into exactly one Spectrum list in the last week. Uh, so that was cool. Um, How'd that go? Uh, I won because yeah. I... Because uh, they played Spectrum. <laughs> well, no. It's, they played, they, the Spectrum, they played Spectrum, all right. But uh, I played Enchantress. Ooh. Spectrum can't buff what doesn't have an ongoing. Same yeah. thing with Red Guardian being able to attack him. Ah, man, I love Red Guardian. So, yeah. Red Guardian's great. Uh, the, just hitting ongoings is great. Hitting... Literally anything with Red Guardian is actually pretty good. Yeah, I like the meta. I'm happy with it. No, I'm, I'm really happy with it as well. If you have somebody who is on the cusp of hitting infinite, but they feel like they're hitting a wall, what um, what deck would you say, hey, give this a try? I would... Obviously, the conversation is normally, you know, more complicated than that, but... right. Because it does come down to like piloting ability and stuff of like what do you feel comfortable using? Yeah. Um, I mean, this the the silky smooth deck isn't the most complicated deck ever to pilot, and I think you can definitely close the gap from like uh, your eighties into the mid late nineties with it. I don't feel like it's the best finishing infinite deck though. Um. Just because I think it comes down to a lot of like mm, a lot more 50 50 games. It's like it's the mind game of I'm moving Vision and Jeff and then I'm dropping Red Hulk, but right. where kind right. of thing, right? Yeah. So that's my thing with the move stuff. Um, so I think this is a great journey deck, like to, to get there, like to get you to the top of the mountain. You have um, to be prepared for major tilts one way or the other like some Correct. of those big snap games you're going to win and some of them you're going to lose and you got to let it balance out ride the tilts so but if you I, have strong mental run it if not uh, maybe find something else that's a little more consistent i do think, I think discard i go yeah, like discard classic too. apoc discard that guy is is consistent is very as consistent. long as red guardian's not hunting too many draculas i lean towards like as far as a list goes to just get over the hump. Uh, I, I think either Hella or Hella Tribunal or Tribunal, like one of those decks. Um, that's kind of where I lean. It's just really good efficiently uh, just stealing eight cubes. And that's what you want to hit infinite. Gotcha. I love that we both picked discard, but very different um, right. play styles and decks. I will say I've had just unmitigated success with this junk deck. Like if you could run junk, like run junk. This one? <laughs> um, not that one, my version, but you could run that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could run it. Yeah, it's, it's a, like, that's, what, that's what's great about metas like this, where it's just wide open and you can just yes. play whatever you want. As long as you're good with the list, just play it. Destroy works pretty well as well if you want to hit a groove. Um, but yeah, I think in this one, like deck wise, those are some great recommendations. And then if you're on that climb, just start being very cagey with retreating when the opponent snaps, <laughs> take a very critical, um, audit of your gameplay. How many times did they snap? You stayed and then you lost. Yeah. If it is not a good ratio, retreat as soon as they snap and then you will, your cubes will thank you. Yeah, especially if if you do play a deck like Hella or yeah. Tribunal, honestly, unless you are 
200% sure that your combo is going to go off and you've discarded a good amount of cards or you're going to get your big numbers with Tribunal, leave. Yeah. Leave the game. Exactly. Like, that's the only way you should stay. And you can take one, two, or three games in a row of losing one or two cubes at a time. But the ones you win, you're going to get four to eight cubes at a time. So it will balance out and you will eventually hit infinite. Exactly. People tend to forget that infinite is not a test of your card game skill as much as it is a test of your understanding of when to snap, when to leave. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. When I'm playing in like the top 500 range of... Well, when I'm playing in that range, I get matched up with people who are below 5,000, kind of in the 5,000 to 1,000. And then I see these categories of like the really high level players. The really high level players are very cagey on um, retreating, snapping, and then like quick reactions. Well, looking ahead, as we look to close out this wonderful week, I'm next so week is going to be oh, this white spotlight. widow. White. Part of me is actually like I found junk now, and now everybody's gonna be playing junk, Brad. The maybe, mirror is uh, interesting though, so I'm into it. Maybe uh, you lean into like I don't know a um, like a bounce version. I definitely want to try bounce with this because at the two cost. I mean, guys, getting taking away two portions of their board just guaranteed is so brutal, and you can still play Black Widow and. White Widow. There's nothing stopping you. You can right. use debris, goblins. I mean, if you use debris, don't bounce debris. Like de bouncing debris is the greedy side. You just play debris and you play White Widow twice. That's four spaces gone from their side of the board. They're playing with only, they lost a third of their board to zeros. Right. I actually like her a lot with um, Red Guardian. Because yes, because Red Guardian will take away the ability of the kiss, meaning that it will never buff itself when the location is full. Yep. So it'll then be a guaranteed minus two instead of a maybe minus four. What? A guaranteed minus two instead of a maybe minus four? It'd be a minus six because he's hitting it at minus four. It has ongoing is uh it, it's a zero zero. What is because a zero zero? Pull it up right now. Uh, oh. ongoing gets minus four unless the location is filled. Ah, okay, okay, I got you. So so it's base is zero, zero, it goes to, okay, okay. Yeah, so my thinking is like you hit this with Red Guardian and you're like, yeah, cool. Uh, this is just a guaranteed minus two on your board now. Gotcha. So any kind of, you, as someone who got kissed, you want to disable it. Correct. Yeah, so like Enchantress could be cool there. Um really that's actually it uh yeah, you, you can you can lady death strike it from sure. your own end to get rid of it so like there's ways to get around it but i and then destroy right any of the predators to junk are still going to do well against um white widow i'm admittedly a little less excited about white widow than i was originally um and i think why is that Brad? Just the more I think about her as a card, I, I recognize that she's strong, um, but she's narrowly strong in like kind of specific ideas like junk, uh, like just lane fill. Like you could, I guess, do like Jean Grey stuff and force them and then you can put like, you know, Mojo and stuff and like, cool, you got rid of your minus four, but I gained plus six. So it's a, still a two point swing technically um, in in my favor. Uh, so there's there's interesting things you can do, I suppose, within that scope. But looking at the rest of the month, everything else is mostly generically strong in some capacity to where they don't need as much of a supporting cast, where I think White Widow really wants a supporting cast. Even Valentina. Yeah. Uh, of course, she's going to be great in Loki, right? But maybe just play an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. type of random card list is good enough like getting a imagine you pull infinite and you have a 417 you just skip three and you're like look at that or a red hulk yep. a red hulk dropping him down back up goes right back up one buff from red hulk is a is a now he's 12 power he's already above his own rate so 
Yeah, well, we know we know Red Hulk should get tweaked down just a little Probably. bit. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't Lloyd be gets shocked. Lloyd brings was, up, yeah. uh, is this three-cost Viper's time to shine, being able to push a kiss back? <laughs> that would be incredibly funny. I think it's going to be too inconsistent with the junk game plan. Mm-hmm. Now, if we get a one-dimensional junk meta with a lot of mirrors, then Viper could actually have a spot with like you pushing stuff back and forth. Like if they're, if you know they're bringing goblins and other stuff, it'll free up space on your side of the board, take up space on their side of the board. Could be a good option actually, or it could be that your junk deck is going to adapt and run Carnage. Lady Deathstrike clearing both sides in the mirror is interesting to think about. But I might want Carnage to make it one-sided, depending on how games shake out. We'll have to see what her impact really is. Um, but going back to what you were saying about general use, Black Widow at a two cost was general use. Because Correct. she took away the draw and she took away their board space. And that could be good. In, it was great in junk and good anywhere. And this is great in junk, good not really anywhere else. I am interested in maybe a Darkhawk deck that can curve like Korg into this into like Black uh, Black Widow on three. Um, does she, but does she really synergize with Black Widow? If anything, there's if you're not all in on junk, there's anti synergy to giving them extra ways of filling space. Sure, but you're giving them a negative one. So now if they fill up that lane, they're they have two cards taking up negative one total. Yeah, which is tough. But what it means is they could play that negative one. I mean, yeah, if they're, if they're stacking it all on that lane, which I guess the idea is they would to try and fill it, is then they have to win through something giant. And I, you could still do the Dark Hawk, you know, Sentry, Hood, Annihila stuff too. Bring in a little um, more junk. Yeah. Right. Uh, which that was already a successful deck. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm looking forward to her. I'm excited to play with her, but I don't know. The more I talk about her, the more I think about where she goes and stuff, the more I'm just like, I don't think she's going to be like my favorite card of the month. Like, or even like up that, I, I, I think she's dare I say the second worst card of the month. She's ahead of us agent, but then behind Valentina, I think Valentina's better. Think Valentina because I think is Valentina better. is just generically strong of what she does and has the added bonus of just being insane in Loki decks. Yes. No, I think Valentina is going to be good, but I currently put junk decks better than Loki decks. Mm -hmm. So I might go ahead and take the White Widow over Valentina. Well, I guess maybe what we should do for our next episode is uh, when they're head both head. released. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go into a friendly battle. Okay. We'll, we'll fight it out with White Widow and Valentina, and you're going to be real sad when I Loki you, and I'm like, look who has the Annihilus now. Eh? Eh? That specific matchup against each other is interesting to think about. That yeah. <laughs> Loki taking the Annihilus at the end is pretty brutal. Because then um, you can not ever fill your side with the uh, for the White Widow, so it has the minus four. That way Annihilus does send it over, or at least destroy it. Well, I'm looking forward to it, Teddy. All right, I'll take it. All right, and thank you everyone for watching. This is, again was our first live open to everyone episode. We're going to be doing more of these in the future. We'll figure out what ways we're going to be implementing that in the future. But if you want to be able to watch every single week live, go to patreon.com slash can't stop snapping. You can join as a free member, of course. We encourage that of all people from around wherever you're watching from and of course on top of that you can go to youtube.com slash can't stop snapping as well and go ahead and sub sub to our new youtube channel we have bonus content that typically goes on uh the patreon which looks like we're going to be recording bounce this weekend teddy most likely uh yes there yeah there may or may not be a fire bounce track coming right to so. the content near you so that is going to be going on Patreon probably this weekend. Uh, and then we'll have that come to YouTube a week later. So if you want to see that early, go to Patreon. Otherwise, the only other place to see it is the YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash can't stop snapping. I think it's going to do it for us here, to te uh, Teddy. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in week after week and showing up live. We love to have that audience interaction because Brad and I are both like we do it for you guys. 
Yep. We also just love it. Like we will we'll stay stay here, but we love having the extra support and the extra guidance on, you know, where to direct the content. So keep stop snap don't stop snapping, guys. Keep stop snapping. <laughs> yep. Changing the name, baby. Trademark it. <laughs> Bye everybody. Uh. Can't Stop Snapping is a podcast hosted and produced by Brad Safer and Teddy Ninja, originally created by Michael Thurman.